Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin. Wednesday, July 13th, around 7.45 a.m. Heading into the office a bit early, uh, trying to get some uh, a project that I've been working on for a while done with a couple hours of uh, total concentration. And I uh, thought I'd uh, do this morning's video to sort of continue my uh, Python tutorial video series that I seem to have begun now to coincide with my um, falling in love with learning and immersing myself into Jupyter Notebook. Uh, in case you haven't gotten the idea yet from my uh, video series, uh, Jupyter Notebook is a game changer as much as, say, I've been trying to think what it's been the equivalent to for me, but certainly as Vim. Vim is a lifetime text editor, an API, a language for controlling text, if you will, that once learned will serve you for the rest of your life and you'll never have to learn a new system for, say, recording and playing back keyboard macros, um, or copying and pasting text, or jumping around in a file. And uh, you can always rely on it being there. Now, Jupyter Notebook has not become part of the fabric of the very IT landscape and infrastructure, almost, the way VI in all its variations, such as Vim and NVI have, but it has certainly come out of the gate strong. And, uh, I see this reflected not only in my own work, but in the talk of the podcasts I'm listening to and all the various guests who come on when they are asked to bring up, you know, important things or what they think are game changers. Uh, the same notions come up over and over. And uh, it turns out that this way of working that's very student and scientist oriented that I guess was innovated by Wolfram Alpha. Uh, I guess Stephen Wolfram, uh, who, who made the Mathematica uh, program. And Mathematica was proprietary and fairly expensive, but it had this way of operating that he called Notebook, where the student or scientist could make notes, execute things in an interactive, shell environment that supported embedded graphics and visualizations for output and uh, it was very popular and it was a missing piece for people who started to use Python for the same things that they used Mathematica for but were missing their notebook environment so poof this thing exists now in the free and open source world in the Python world and now, in fact, in many other uh, programming worlds, because this thing that was previously called IPython had renamed itself to Jupyter Notebook, at least in part to set itself up for supporting any language. Not any, but supporting multiple languages. Perhaps any, but at the moment, they have certain ones that they do support, and it certainly has a bias towards those languages used for scientific uh, research and analysis, such as R. And I believe they'll be supporting Julia. But anyway, uh, I'm loving listening to these podcasts. They're definitely uh, guiding my development significantly. Um, one of the books that Michael Kennedy's Talk Python to Me podcast had uh, talked about, interviewed the author of, was Fluent Python. And in Fluent Python, I'm learning such things as um, thinking in terms of generators first. And there's a whole discussion there that is probably going to be the subject of this morning's uh, Talking Head Coding video. And really, that's the reason I, I'm sort of doing these videos to sort of set myself up for the coding video so perhaps the rhythm could go uh, walk to work, discuss the issues, sit down and implement, do the coding, explain what I was, or demonstrate uh, what I was just talking about uh, to help people learn Python in a tutorial series. 
but I uh, am think you know thinking about the different styles that people are doing this stuff because my style is very clearly extremely casual non-edited I don't do interviews with people I am just documenting my day-to-day -day work I'm just you know inserting a channel into the process of what I'd be doing anyway such as walking to work sitting down and learning something new that I could apply to my immediate problems at work and uh, this but these uh, other guys who do these podcast guys and girls um, who do these podcasts it's uh, somewhat carefully thought out but not always that thought out there are three distinct styles that I thought I'd mention of these uh, folks I'm listening to uh, probably the first one that's turned me on to this whole listening to podcasts as a legit way of exploring the Python community uh, concept it was Michael Kennedy and talk Python to me spectacular podcast series anyone who wants to learn Python listen to it beginning to end uh, skip over episodes that are too cerebral or advanced and focus in on those that are talking about what you need to be hearing and uh, just sort of learn through osmosis take notes Google some of the things they mention uh, I'll certainly be putting named tuples to extremely greater use uh, which also gives me the courage to dive headfirst into object-oriented style of programming because once you're doing named tuples it clicks um, so Michael Kennedy is very much like a clean object-oriented style well thought out code reuse significant planning involved greater idea of what he's building in mind then you got Brian Aachen excuse me if I messed up your name but I listened to him uh, less but only by virtue of there being less episodes and it's a little bit uh, drier shall we say more procedural focusing more on implementations and the details of APIs uh, less interviews more listening to him talk directly uh, but the things he talks directly about uh, so precise almost like code tutorials but in podcasts takes a certain mindset and uh, you might say functional but he represents the procedural style of programming that is very uh, natural to take up in Python and in fact he prefers PyTest over unit test. PyTest is a third-party testing framework that you have to do a pip install to get whereas unit test is built into the Python uh, core packages and it's there quote for free with every Python installation and unit test from my perception requires you to think in object-oriented terms it's one of those tough noogie situations they say object-oriented programming is totally optional in Python unless you want to use the distributions built-in testing framework then it's a must uh, but if you just install PyTest you can think in much more uh, to me natural procedural terms so uh, Brian, that's a testing code I believe it's called another excellent podcast that I do recommend people take up um, and then there's the partially derivative uh, guys and now girl thankfully this is one that I think on my drives back and forth to the cat skills I will be playing on a speaker instead of in my headphones so that my daughter Addie can hear a woman uh, Vidya uh, sorry if I'm not using all your last names I don't know them all so I'm not using any but uh, Vidya and uh, Chris and Jonathan all kind of banter back and forth loosely uh, talking about whatever comes to mind covering the articles of the day occasionally going structured uh, demonstrating in one of their episodes that they could totally emulate the NPR formula for 
uh, radio spots and then immediately going back to their alder more informal style because a zillion reasons but uh, I believe the top most of which is that it doesn't require editing and editing takes tons of time so giving things structure to maximize its accessibility and consumability by the public by the mass media takes more time in input output and it's not always an advantageous uh, transaction if that's not your business if you're doing this for fun because you're gonna do it anyway you're gonna talk about data science anyway with your buds and your business partners you might as well make a podcast out of it and get yourself at very least a little bit of notoriety uh, especially when you launch your product and have a little free advertising by your built-in audience so um, their style this very loose style is a lot like just loading Jupyter Notebook and writing some Python right there in what's called main. And when you write a script directly in main without using uh, the def keyword for defining functions or the class keyword for defining classes, uh, all your code is in a location uh, known as, uh, if you checked the um, the internal variable underscore underscore name underscore underscore it would come back with underscore underscore main underscore underscore hence that uh, very pythonic and at once unpythonic because oh my god who would ever uh, know that uh, there was this uh, whoops, this internal if you were not explicitly told and uh, this is a way that uh, developers keep the contents of the package from being executed automatically when you import it. <laughs> uh, with me looking at my phone, everyone thinks it's Pokemon for some reason. Uh, it took me a while to even register into that popular story going on that, you know, finding the dead body and uh, all these virtual Pokemon around us and uh, uh, Nintendo's stock going up by nine billion dollars worth uh, by people mentioning it to me because I'm that not tuned in to pop culture headlines, I guess for better or for worse. This is my world. But I was making the point that Vidya, Chris, and Jonathan are the equivalent of programming in Maine. That is neither uh, procedural uh, nor object-oriented uh, nor, nor even functional. I guess it's closest to functional because it's synonymous, but uh, there you have it. You got three uh, big Python podcasts out there, uh, I believe right now, that are active. There's a few others, uh, but I don't see new episodes coming out regularly. Uh, of these three, uh, there's... Uh, Michael Kennedy of Talk Python to Me, who is of the object-oriented style. There's Brian Aachen, who's of the uh, procedural style. And there's uh, the three folks from Partially Derivative who are like coding in Maine, uh, scripting such as it were. Uh, the, uh, the approach that makes the language accessible in the first place uh, such that you don't have to actually learn computer science or be formally trained in coding in order to sit down and do highly productive things. And uh, <laughs> it's quite the opposite of a put down because uh, sold uh, using the tools that that world, the world of data science, uh, is putting forth into the Python community uh, because of this uh, you know, I use the word bandwagon a lot. I, I guess groundswell applies as well. And, you know, Python has been out for some, what, 25 plus years and has already been deeply embedded into processes around the world from, you know, major companies. And you'll find uh, very often full-time people working on components of Python core 
um, paid employees of companies like Hewitt Packard, specifically hiring these folks to work on and maintain uh, those portions of Python that have become uh, mission critical to they themselves, the uh, sponsoring company. Uh, I, I mentioned how uh, embedded into everything Python really is these days and used the example of OpenStack a few videos ago and sort of mentioned you know, NASA, but I really sold it short. Uh, Rackspace. Uh, virtually every uh, Amazon Computing Cloud competitor who's cobbling together their virtual hosting infrastructure because the first thing to do is look to the free and open source world, figure out the best uh, stacks out there, software stacks out there, and uh, use them. And when you're doing that to create uh, data centers, with partitionable and sellable units of computing space. That's OpenStack, and when it's OpenStack, it's, it's Python, primarily, with, uh, you know, bits and pieces in there in, in other languages uh, for various reasons. But uh, Python is part of the framework, or is the framework of, and is part of the fabric of so many things in tech it is ascending in uh, certainly replacing Perl as the de facto standard language of inter-process communication, um, the glue language role. <clears throat> and it used to be, it still is, that Perl is distributed with every uh, Linux installation because so many install scripts and other things have Perl as a dependency but you're finding Python being used for those types of tasks more and more, <clears throat> sort of going hand in hand with C and all of C's variations. Uh, whenever you need <clears throat> a human accessible, uh, able to be taken up by the masses uh, interface, API. And uh, you see that in, you know, everywhere. You've got this, these wonderful uh, packages written in uh, Java, like the Lucene stack, uh, which includes a whole lot of stuff uh, from a search engine uh, to faceted search on websites. Um, you know, basically everything you need to build, you know, corporate uh, intranets uh, that have search features and a lot of e-commerce features. Uh, written in Java, but all the interacting with the components being done in uh, Python because people like to code in Python. Same with all the Amazon web services. You use the Bodo library and you can basically do anything. Yeah, but I say basically, there's always exceptions, but anything that the Amazon web framework, uh, the uh, web services uh, can provide, you can control you know, right up to the automation and the deployment procedures through Python, through the Bodo library. And uh, let's see, where am I going with this? Oh yeah, 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 my tutorial series, because I'm almost at work now, so let me wrap this up. Um, my tutorial series is just fitting into, I guess, the kind of, uh, you know, set of styles uh, that are out there. And I have been much uh, ridiculed by few people, loudly, but by few, uh, over my rambling style. And it's reflected in how I code and how I write. And I, I joke that, you know, the opposite of this is definitely DRY, don't repeat yourself. Very popular in the Ruby world, very aligned to Macintosh, because all those people who believe in alternative, you know, superior stuff, uh, jump on, uh, you know, fatty bad bandwagons pretty quickly. And all of those who jumped onto the Ruby fad uh, bandwagon because of Rails uh, are discovering now that the language that won was Python. The language that has been baking in all these uh, specialized domains for so many years, winning over the scientific uh, data community and, you know, uh, you know, the virtual uh, host uh, 
community, uh, community after community has, has embraced uh, Python. Um, <clears throat> the Ruby people are shaking their fists going, you know, curse you, Python. And uh, so I'm making sure that when people are choosing their bandwagons now, that they fully appreciate what Python has to offer. Not fully, I couldn't possibly cover that much subject matter. But I'm putting forth first those things that I wished I had learned earlier in Python or alternatively were available in Python when I started, although I could have always gotten a future version and, and gotten these things. I, I went the more traveled path of the 2.x's instead of the 3.x's. I could have had a lot of these features earlier, but delve right into things like generators and generator expressions right from the start. And although it might not be one of the more searched on and therefore uh, viewed videos I'll be publishing, the view counter certainly goes up slower than when I talk about like list comprehensions. But when you tweak a list comprehension into a generator expression, there's all kinds of advantages like being able to load a uh, million line file, 10 million. In fact, this video I'll do this morning, first thing, I will create a 10 million line file and then I will spin through it with Python in at least two different ways. One to demonstrate a generator, which uh, uses a yield. Perhaps I'll do that, or maybe I'll just do with open. I'll do a with open on a file, uh, which in itself is uh, kind of awesome in Python, but then I'll do the same thing to step through that 10 million line file with just a, uh, a generator expression, which is a lot like a list comprehension, so it'll be you know, x4x in open file name, you know, colon with uh, parentheses around it. That's a generator expression, very much like a list expression, to spin through a 10 million line file that I had just generated. Anyway, that'll be my video this morning. And as usual, uh, thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And don't forget to subscribe.